Hey, folks, this is the Urban Louisville Chess uh, Podcast. I am your host, Coach Coach Corbin. And I know I say this a lot, but this time I really mean it because it is absolutely true. This is one of the – I've been looking forward to this interview for the longest time. We're going to interview international grandmaster Maurice Ashley. Um, and, and I'm not going to say a whole lot about him because uh, I only got 20 minutes for this interview. If I was to talk about him and all his accomplishments, we'll be up here 25, 30, 45 minutes. I mean, it's just – it's just amazing what this brother has done. And not all, and, and then he just keeps on and he just keeps on and just keeps on. He's he's worse than the energizer energizer bunny. But what we're going to talk to uh the grandmaster today is about the HBU chess chess classic and some of his project. Brother, thank you so much for being on today. Brother Corbin, thanks so much for having me. Appreciate the love. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna really, we're really gonna start off with some of your future projects. Now, I know you said you got a lot, a lot of things lined up. That doesn't surprise me within the least, but I, I heard that you have a book coming out, another book coming out. Is that true? Well, I have various book projects. One book that's coming out next year is a children's book that is made for young readers. And it's about me. It's about my life hmm. uh, as a young person. And then my quest to become a grandmaster. So it's, Totally meant for that age age range around five, six, seven years old. Uh, it's being published by Magic Cat out of the UK. So to be it out in the spring of next year in the UK and then coming to the US in the fall. Uh, I have a couple of other book projects in the works. One called Move by Move. It's a book about why chess is great for your life, whether it's business, whether it's personal. Uh, it's a book that goes in detail about the benefits of chess, but a lot also about the philosophy of chess. I mean, mm. Key ideas that I speak to corporations about, I go around the country and the world speaking to various corporations and universities about this great game of ours and why it is that everybody should learn the game. And if you don't, well, the lessons that can be applied specifically to your life. Okay. Uh, another project that's in the works is a, is a book about the Kasparov Deep Blue Match, which I was a commentator on. Uh, now in the age of AI and chat GPT and all that, that's become much more relevant. So it, it's going to be a graphic novel made for, for younger uh, teenage readers who love those oh, things. Right. But uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we just started talking about it. That's not going to be out for a while, though. That's not to be published okay. until... 2026, believe it or not. Like, that's how long it takes to draw these things. So that's that. And I also have my course, my chessable course that came out last year, uh, The Secrets of Chess Geometry, which has been just fantastic in winning awards. Mm -hmm. So I plan to do a bunch of new ones this year, more courses. So, yeah, I'm doing some heavy lifting on the, on the publishing side. It's been my latest love as I've transitioned away from commentary and really gone into content creation. Now, so, so... It, now, I know a lot of people, they like to buy books in advance. If they go to your website, are they, they going to be able to make some advance purchases? Brother, you know, maybe I should have you working on my website because you got some good ideas right there already. Uh, I, I have not connected those advanced purchases yet. It's not something that uh, we have fully discussed on the marketing side because these are big, big uh, corporations or big publishing houses, I should say, that are right. doing these things. So I'll let them take care of everything at the right time and all that marketing goodies. Okay. Uh, I'll be sure to note to everybody, though, who follows me on social media, whether it's my Twitter or my Twitter page or my Insta page, Facebook, I will be announcing all these things so people will know exactly where to go to get them. Okay. Right, right offhand, what, what is your uh, Twitter handle and in, in Instagram? Just, just Maurice Ashley. I'm Maurice Ashley Chess on Instagram. Okay. All I'm right. Maurice Ashley on Twitter. Okay. All right. Now, brother, you're also involved with the HBCU Chess Classics coming up in April, April 22nd. Be down there, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, specifically Morehouse. Um, how did you get involved in that? Well, specifically, it will be at Morris Brown, although the young people who – are helping or really the main organizers are from Morehouse and Spelman. Okay. So how did I get involved? Well, a young lady named Shania Francis from who goes to Spelman reached out to me. So sent an email and said, we're trying to start 
a Black Odyssey Chess Society at the AUC, the Atlanta University Center, which comprises Morehouse, Spellman, and Clark. When she said that, I just said, that's beautiful because I love to support initiatives of this type. Uh, and so when people reach out to me, I said, what, what can I do to help? So she wanted to get in a conversation with me. We got on a Zoom call. We started talking about it. I helped her find some coaches for the program. And they started last year. And then I said, you know, you've got to do a chess tournament, though. You can't leave without doing some sort of competition. Get a nice fat trophy that people are going to be bragging about and, and really yeah. lay down your market. That's how you do it, right? Like, no that's matter right. how small it is, make sure the trophy is is tall. Like, that's that's how we do it. We get people excited. You know how it is. You promote yes, it. Sir. Yes, sir. So, so I told them that, and they ran with it. And all of a sudden, they said, we're going to do a tournament. We're, we're going to the HBCU Chess Classic. What do we do now? <laughs> I was like, oh, boy, what? <laughs> what did I get myself into? So we got on another call. I said, I can hear the details. This is what you got to do with the chess tournament. You got to see we'll see who we can get involved. You know, and first Howard was hesitant and and uh, Hampton was hesitant. So I said, give me the phone numbers. I'm calling them up. Mm -hmm. Make my phone calls, you know, put a little GM elbow grease in there. And then we mm -hmm. got one college and another one that we got North Carolina a and And all of a sudden the buzz starts, you know, and then it just right. starts jumping. And that's that's how it all happened. Brother, you got some people excited in Louisville, Kentucky about it. I was uh, negotiating, doing a, a couple of chess tournaments here in Louisville at the community centers. And uh, the guy who's over the community centers, he said, you got to be kidding me. I said, no, brother, this is, this is what's going on. He wanted the, the date and location and all as if he was just going to up and just go and drive on down there. Come on. I had, to, I had to admit, I thought about it. Come on down. Now listen, this is the first ever HBCU chess classic, right? This is history in the making. We've got eight schools that are participating. I mentioned Hampton. I mentioned uh, Morehouse, uh, Howard, Spelman, Clark, North Carolina, A&T, mm -hmm. FAMU, and of course, the host uh, university, which is Morris Brown. Now I'm hearing somebody as far as Texas Southern wants to show up. So it's going to be a party. It's going to be a party. Whatever happens at the tournament, you know, people are bringing teams. Howard is bringing 15 people. Mm. Uh, North Carolina a and is bringing seven. The, of course, the AUC will be represented by their 15 strong. So people are, people are coming, right? And they're right. going to play. We're not looking at, you know, these are not grandmasters, obviously. They're college students. But they are part of historically black colleges and universities. And we're making a statement as we start now and say, we're going to build this. Right. There are over 100 of them in our country. There's going to be a future when the majority of those are participating in a nationwide HBCU event. Yes. So that's the vision. It starts now. Now, you can either be there or be square. Like, right. you know, you're, never, you're never going to see the first thing. You know, hear everybody say, man, that was that was a slam. And I wish I had gone. Well, mm -hmm, you could go and just be right. there. There's going to be a number of luminaries there. Uh, I hear little birdie told me the mayor of Atlanta might show up. Hmm. This is going to be there's going to be a partying going on. You know how we do when right. we get together right. and do a chess tournament. We're going to do it the right way. All right, right. it's going to be fun. Uh, it, it's it's not just going to be a simple tournament. It's going to be a party afterwards as well. Food being served, music. I mean, it's it's going to be fantastic. Right, right. right. Is is there somewhere that people can go if they want to make a, a donation to, to help make this happen? Well, I mean, we are already sufficiently sponsored, but, you know, there's always next year and the like. So uh, that that's something that we can connect with on and that won't be a problem, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, the Black Odyssey Chess Society is really the key entity that is running this. Uh -huh. So anyone gets in contact with, with them, we'll be able to figure those things out. Great, great. I, I just got a, a couple more questions. First of all, let, let me say... Uh, this is the Urban Louisville Chess Podcast. I want to thank everybody for, for coming in. We're talking to International Grandmaster Maurice Ashley. I'm on Facebook page. Facebook, I mean, I'm on Facebook. My Facebook page is Urban Louisville Chess uh, Podcast. Brother Maurice, I, I also heard that you're trying to help produce Jamaica's first Grandmaster? Absolutely. Absolutely. That is another initiative. Um, many people may know that I was born on the island of Jamaica. I came to the United States when I was 12 years old. Uh, learned chess really here. I knew the rules back in Jamaica, but I really got uh, the bug 
when I was a 14 year old at Brooklyn Technical High School in BK. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, fast forward, I did become a grandmaster, but I didn't represent and I've never represented Jamaica in this regard, although I've gone down and I've spoken to the chess players there, even trained the chess players there, have one of them, Jomo Peterson, to become an international master. But we want to get to the next level. We want to get to the grandmaster level. Jomo is not a player. Uh, now he's a coach more than a player. Uh, and so we want to see it finally happen. So I reached out to the finance minister of Jamaica, mm. by the name of J- Nigel Clark, who's a chess fan, who happened to be a chess fan. And we've, we've been friends for quite some time. I said, listen, let's make it happen finally. Let's just get that GM title. Let's make Jamaica have mm. some kind of proper representation in the grandmaster ranks as somebody mm. who's, who grew up in Jamaica and, and trained under the system. He mulled over the idea for several months. And then one day he said, I love it. Let's make it happen. Mm. We're going to do it. We're going to talk to Parliament. All of a sudden, he was making a speech in front of Parliament and telling me that I had to be involved. Telling everybody, yeah, the Grandmaster said, he's going Godfather this. Oh, wow. So I was like, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> I shouldn't open my mouth if I'm not ready to back it up. Right. So now I've been speaking with the Jamaican Chess Federation, the council members there, and we're putting together a plan. He's given a quarter million dollars for the first year's effort, and we're just going to keep it moving. So the government of Jamaica, obviously, they see some great value in this. They stepped up. Yep. You know, they just didn't say, oh, that's a nice idea. I'll send you a letter, you know. Oh, Nothing. no. I mean, oh, no. They, Cash money. The people's why, money. The people's why, money. Why do you think they, they – what do you think they're seeing the value of, of it in? I mean – Well, I mean, the, first of all, it's chess. We all know that chess helps to develop a multiplicity of skills, right, that we want all our young people to have. And so they see that value, right? They, they're they very clear on the fact that chess has all those benefits. But Jamaica is a very, very proud island nation. If you don't know, I mean, Jamaica, they, we're a small country, but big ideas and big dreams. If you look at the track and field, Usain Bolt, Shelly Ann, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and all the, the champions that they produce in track and field. Of course, on the music scene, you know, reggae music, Bob Marley, that's international worldwide. In terms of the entertainment side, you know, if you got a party, go down to Jamaica, it's going to be on, right? So right. Jamaica has an oversized footprint in the world for these kinds, we recognize for these things already. Mm-hmm. And that's because Jamaicans are such a proud people and it's all about excellence. So, they, they start something they want to do it the right way. And you say, let's play some chess. It's not, oh, let's, you know, it's going to be some board game that you put. No, let's produce champions. Let's see what we can do. So they just needed the right push, the right vision, uh, the right sense of how to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I said, let's put the money in and make it happen. Brother, this is the, this is the last uh, question I have for you. When you were speaking there, you know what I was thinking of? Uh, black students in the United States, all throughout the United States, as you know, they're in in many many cities, um, black students are just not achieving the way they should be achieving academically. And I've read a, a lot of studies where that you know chess and academic achievement sort of you know one they they help one another. Um, I actually had one math teacher here in Louisville tell me flat out. He said, "Look, I don't know if the chess is helping the math or if the math math is helping the chess, but he said the top math students, many of them." Almost most of them were top chess students. And so he said to me, Corbin, do you, do you really want to help your daughter become a good, you know, really do well in math? And I said, absolutely. He said, get her in chess. He didn't say, have her study geometry or algebra too. He, he as a math teacher, been a ma- certified math teacher for over 10 years, said, get her in chess. So from that point, that's how I got involved, teaching chess, basically on a full-time basis and start a own nonprofit organization. And, and do you see a possible, you know, chess is possibly one tool that could be used to help black students do better academically. That helps all students. It absolutely helps black students as well. I've been coaching chess, started coaching chess in 1988. <laughs> it's been a minute, you know, we, yeah. we the elders now, okay. We the OGs. <laughs> Uh, I've watched chess transform lives over and over and over again. The magic of this game is is its effectiveness. 
if it didn't work, I wouldn't promote it. It was, so mm. it was just fun because I like it. I wouldn't promote it in schools. I'd say, yeah, you like to play chess, you like to play chess. You just you could do that. But the fact that I've seen chess transform lives, not just in mathematics, in the thinking process, the efficiency, the analytical skill, the problem solving, reading even it has been shown that chess helps because it's a game that is about thinking first, about strategizing, looking ahead. It's the kinds of things that you need to do, not just in school, but in life, in business, you name it. In sports, you will find that the chess players have that edge. They mm. just, and they don't have to try to, they just have to sit down and play and the game will start to inject and infect its magic in anyone who participates. So I promote chess wholeheartedly, have been promoting it, as I said, since 1988 continue to do so. And I want to see excellence in our communities. So yes, your math teacher was uh, quite the visionary and made a great point. You want yeah. to get your kids better, not just in math, but in all subject matters, get that concentration and patience, develop those effective skills we want for our kids, have them play chess. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I have to admit, I mean, that's what I saw it do for my daughter. Um, she started off little pigtails and little doll and at the tournaments always asking me to come sit beside her while she's I said, baby, I can't do that to to point to where we'd be at a tournament. We talking and they announce, you know, they announce the rounds. That kid just dart off like that, you know, whatever. Just see you, daddy, gone. And then this past beautiful. year she graduated summa cum laude in the beautiful, university. Beautiful story. And um she loved t- talking to kids about chess. And my brother, I want to thank you at all. Thank you for your time today. Hope that maybe we can do it again sometime. And uh, we will, uh, when we edit this video, we will have your uh, web address on there. So if people can go there, sign up for your newsletter, and keep keep in touch with what you're doing, brother. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank and, uh, you and any last parting words for us, bro? You know, I think about how long a journey I've been in this game, how much I still look at it every single day. I've mm. been I've been a part of this game since I was 14 years old. I'm 57 years old now. Mm. It's extraordinary when you find your passion, how much it mm. can energize and rejuvenate you every single day. Yes, sir. I do not have to work because I've already found my passion. Right. Every single day I wake up, I feel blessed to have that joy to do something that I love so much and I'm still fascinated by that it's just an ocean of information and knowledge and strategies and ideas that I can continue to blossom from every single day. It keeps me young. So I wish that on all your listeners that they find that thing that they're that passionate about that makes them wake up in the morning and say, oh man, I get to do this again <laughs> right oh right. they find that 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 beautiful uh land of milk and honey where where i found interest all right thank you brother let's keep in touch now okay thank you bro